Would you like to see cities skylines with five different builders? Are you excited when they don't just fix traffic? Hi, I'm Lee, and in this episode of 5B1C, I'll show you how to build land value with a five-star park. Welcome back to 5B1C, where sometimes the 5Bs have trouble syncing up their mods and assets in the 1C. In this case, it was me. We record these a bit ahead of time, and in my case, I didn't get to see City Planner use European assets, and I didn't realize I was supposed to turn mine on. So we have to actually go back and fix that, which I'll do early on. You probably already noticed that in the last video. Uh, so uh, before I do that, though, I just want to take an opportunity to admire this view. Zardis, uh, I have to be honest, when he started building on these hills, I thought, oh, the grades. But this city actually has a lot of character because of those grades. Those hills really look magnificent, sort of reminds me of San Francisco uh, with the grid imposed on the hills. So, so far, I really love this city and I'm really excited to add to it. I mean, just it's a really cool view with the, the bay and all the activity on it, the bridge in the distance, the highway snaking its way through the valley. I'm really excited about this. So we're going to add out here on the north side of town a big new neighborhood with a five star park. And then uh, the other thing we're going to do is I'm going to go up this hill. If I uh, kick on my topographical lines, this area is actually, it's got some hills and it's pretty steep going up along next to the highway, but there's a lot of buildable land over here. So uh, some of it's even flat. So we're going to work on that. But before we get started, I really need to go back and fix some issues I caused when I forgot to load the European tile set. So I lost a few buildings that City Planner placed in this area here, and I need to put those back before we get going. Another thing I want to do here too is take a look at land value, because we, we want to get our tax revenues up without having to increase rates. And the best way to do that is to increase land value, which is delivering a service for those tax rates. Uh, so Concord Valley is the only place, I think, in the whole city where we see any green, and I think it's got the highest land value, 31 credits per square meter. That's pretty awesome. Uh, downtown Port Concord is looking at 18 credits per square meter. Dale Hill is really low at 8 credits per square meter. Um, I don't think we're going to see a lot in the power plant or the cargo port area. You see that's almost stark white. No land value in that area, and that figures because it's mostly industrial and uh, waste disposal, power plants, that sort of thing. The Port Concord waterfront is at 12 credits per square meter. That seems really low for a waterfront, but when you consider that this is mostly industrial, all industrial really, uh, we've got the, the fish markets, that, that is one good thing. The television station that helps increase land values, but this is not going to be a uh, really high land value area anyway, just because it's an industrial waterfront. So this is very typical of the United States. So props to Zardis for following the historical context here and making an industrial waterfront to start off with. What we're gonna do here is extend off of Port Con uh, uh, Concord Boulevard here. And I really liked Zardis idea of connecting that to that highway interchange there. That, that seems like a pretty reasonable thing to do. Let me buy that city square, which will allow us to go up the hill too. And we'll turn on the topographical lines, and you'll see that this is really a very natural place for this road to go. Uh, that, you know, it's not likely it would have gone over this pass between this mountain and hill here to go over to the coast because there's not really a whole lot of desirable land over there. This valley, on the other hand, has at least a little bit of desirable land up over here uh, with some access going up, uh, and eventually it cuts out to the coast. So I really feel like that's exactly where that road would go. Uh, what I want to do is build a neighborhood over here and a big city park right here. And then I'm going to work my way up this hill. I've got a few ideas for that. Uh, between this episode and next, I think we'll have some really cool stuff happen here before we hand it off to the next city builder. So right now, let's focus on expanding this neighborhood. And I've worked out some of this, and I'm going to probably refer to some of the streets by name. I'm going to set a few of them right now, actually. Okay, so now I can actually refer to these streets by name. We're going to rename all of these in a second. 15th Street, 
is the edge of our original plat for Port Concord, let's say, and we're going to extend this road and make it a boulevard, and we're going to build a big old park here. I'm going to go all the way down to, I already forgot the name, Chestnut Street right here, and we're going to extend that. I've worked, some, worked with some of this off camera, so I have a few ideas. Uh, what I want to do, though, is I want to continue this whole idea of alleys that Zarda started off with. I really like that idea. It's not, I just looked at a few maps, of, a few different parts of the Pacific, Pacific Northwest, and it's not really characteristic of that area. It's more like the Midwest, like you look at Chicago or Indianapolis, for example, lots of alleyways on their grids. And uh, you don't see that too much in the Pacific Northwest, but a lot of the people who settled the Pacific Northwest came from places like Chicago and uh, Indianapolis and from places like Ohio, where we have a lot of cities with alleys there too in the older parts of town. So I really feel like, yeah, it would be completely realistic for Midwesterners migrating to the Pacific Northwest, to Washington and Oregon, uh, to bring some of their city planning ideas with them. So I'm gonna continue that, but we're gonna make it a little bit more luxurious with the park and uh, continue on with that. So first thing we're gonna do is extend Chestnut Street and I'm gonna go out 22 units. I'm gonna leave one extra square so that I can run alleyways in between that are one unit wide. And to start off, I'm going to just zone on the corners here. Leave that open. Actually, this is all gonna be on the park, so we, we really wanna have this be expensive real estate right here. So put a corner house here and we're just gonna let that fill in. Now I'm also going to throw in, somewhat at random, a few places here that will grow in and extend pipes here. This will be 16th. Now with some of those growing in, I want to make some of these not quite as deep as the others. I'm gonna go 11 units up here. This is uh, starts getting into the hill. I'm gonna go up 11 units here, and then I'm gonna go straight across. Got a little bit of an angle, but uh, and that's probably gonna upset some of that street over there. I'm gonna start zoning this. All right, so we could use a little more commercial here have the demand for it. Let me lay this out here with gravel roads just to start off with. Now, uh, I want this to be 10 units. Let me uh, just bulldoze that a little easier, faster. 10 units here. 17 units here. And then another 11 units right there. And 11 units here. All right, so now we'll switch back to regular streets here. And we're gonna switch to I just need to put a placeholder road here in, but I'm going to eat that right there, and then this should go straight into that. And we're going to use the boulevard with trees. I don't think there's going to be quite as much traffic going through here, but, you know, we can always change that up if we need to later on. Let's see if that's building up. That is filled in quite nicely. All right, so let's put in, let's zone up some more of these, keep things moving along, and then I'm going to build, put in some of those alleys. All right, so now we have the zoning adjuster. I'm just gonna set that at no priority. I wanna to go to my one unit alley here with parking because I really like the idea of having them have some parking in the back. And uh, we wanna start in the center. Now, one of the things I wanna turn off too is my road guidelines because that's going to make it so that it doesn't line up with the grid. Instead, it'll line it up with roads which are halfway offset from the grid. So I will lay that road in and we want to go away from the center it's going to create a road that's really not usable uh, but if we do it the other way uh, we end up with the grid displacing well i'll show you right here let me pause it first because i don't want to lose the development it'll mess up the grid if we do that because then it'll go with the offset and that doesn't work really well with a one unit road so we want to 
make sure that we always, uh, well, especially with this street here, if I, if I do that, it'll actually force it to all become one segment and be like, oh, you wanted that to be in this all the same direction, right? No, actually I don't. <laughs> so put that back in and then we'll put this center street through here and we can always change the roads and get them lined up right later. All right, so now this is messed up. That's not what we want. So we'll bulldoze that. Oh, it's messy. But it did work. I think. Yeah, we're good. Well, anyway, you get the idea. The finagling with this grid is really kind of hard. <laughs> Building alleys is not something that happens a whole lot in city skylines, probably because of this. So I'm going to start zoning in the alleys in the back so that there can be some guest houses or servants' quarters growing in at one unit by one unit. And then I'm going to extend Concord Boulevard and continue the grid 11 units by 11 units so I have room for the alleys. And I'm also going to let the terrain be my guide and angle Douglas Street so that it will go towards Concord Boulevard but not into the hill. And I'm also time-lapsing this because I think you get the gist of how this all works. We're going to go with three deep commercial. And we're going to leave room for an alley right through here. We need the commercial to grow in first. We're going to do that on both sides of the street here. Each building, it, whenever the uh, growable buildings come in, they grow in according to whether they're middle buildings or corner buildings. And we really like to have corner commercial units if we can have them. Sometimes they will just disappear if we don't get them, and then we make it in the corner after the fact. This will bring some more jobs into the area, which will hopefully get our residential kick-started here. Now this is a tight spot, so I put in some guide roads to make it so I can bring those one-lane alleys out from the center and not mess up my grid. Looks like I'm still going to have some trouble with it anyway. Uh, yeah, there we go. Fix that. So now I can zone this get people moving in and I can reverse those alleys to get them going in the right direction. I want to leave room in the back so that when I build the rest of these alleys in then I can throw in the little houses. All right we can paint this alley in here now too. Obviously this is not something you want to do if <laughs> you're not really too concerned with details. This is really painstaking work to get it to look like this. But I think you'll be happy with the results. I think it'll look really nice. So far, so good. All right, so let's get started on this park. So we want to create a park area. Let me just outline this area here. I'm just going to use the roads as my guide. It doesn't have to be perfectly within. In fact, sometimes I think it's good to have a little spillover because some buildings, you can't put them next to the road otherwise. And we're going to call this... Since it's on Concord Boulevard, we'll call it Boulevard Park. So I've got a few ideas for this here. And what I want to do is have a walking path that connects this area together uh, so that people on Federal Street can just walk right on. And well, this is going to be Concord Place. So you can just walk right on over to Concord Place and go right through the park. So in order to do that, uh, first I need to create a gate. I'm going to set up a small one and we'll put that right here at Federal Street and that'll set my main gate up and then I want to have these set up so that they're five units away that way I can fit in one of these park plazas put one right here well, I won't let me put one at the end of Concord Place I'm going to come back to that in a second get one right there and I'm going to put this here and I'm going to use move it, turn on my grid lines, snap, and bang. Perfect. And then I just need one more gate over here. Now this is a little trickier. I want to have this gate go straight because I'm going to have a path. So let me get a gravel road here and set up some grid lines. So that way at least it will be lined up correctly. And then get my side gate. I have five units in between, that's where I want it. Put that gate down. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm 
going to swap these. And then I'm going to draw in park paths to connect them. And then I'm going to line this up with Federal Street so it goes straight on. So now I have everything about where I want it. Now I just need to move this gate so that it runs up against Concord Boulevard. Don't want it to be too close, or otherwise I won't be able to get the fence to connect over here. And I don't want the fence. It looks all right. Okay, so now I need this to line up. So I've got about seven units here, and it takes me 26 to get here, so about 19. All right, now, let me make sure people have a reason to go to the park right now. That should do. This like is a nice little entryway. Nice little scene right there at the end of the park. And hopefully we have enough. Oh, we're close. All right, so we're going to add a prop. I had this really cool idea. I, I think it'll look fantastic. We have a whole bunch of rocks that come with this map. So I'm going to use one of them to sort of set up a big giant rock garden. Yeah, that's the one I want to use. So I just need to position this in a way that will really attract some attention as, as you go by. Okay, now let's build the park pass around here. Great, now let's make sure all the street lights are going the same direction. That one's backwards. Fix that. So we have the street lights on the outside, all the way around. Perfect. Looks good, looks good, looks great. That's exactly right. Awesome. So now we have all the paths connected in here. We have to get some buildings in there to pass the uh, electricity along. But that is looking really good. Now let's, how, how close are we to our next milestone? We need about 800 more sims. Let's fill in a couple more things here. I think a park cafe would be really good right here. And that will pass electricity between those two entrances, those two gates. It should give me, yes, enough to get to the next level. Uh, let me put in one more gate just to square this off. That looks fantastic to start off. All right, so we'll wait for that to get to level two, and we're already having death problems, aren't we? Yes, our cemetery is filled up. Okay, so that's full. That one is about half full. I'm gonna try to save <laughs> us from disaster here by emptying the cemetery out a little bit. I really need to get more residential moved in here, and uh, I don't think that this neighborhood alone is gonna be able to pull it off. I could probably zone in the back here, though, so let me do that. Yeah, we're running out of time really quick here. <laughs> I got to get more people to move in before more people die. <laughs> Maybe before more neighborhoods die. Let's see your fake. Yeah, we still need to get more. We need to get more Sims out of the cemetery. Okay, so now let's work on going up the hill then. So I usually, when I'm following the terrain, I usually just like to go with a gravel road because it makes it so much easier to see where I am with the terrain. And I'm just snaking up the road here, trying to make a junction for a couple of new main roads. Hey, our park leveled up. And this does seem like a logical place to put a junction in a new neighborhood because there's a lot of relatively flat terrain here available. Now, I think we could probably get about 700 sims maybe to move in over there. I don't know. Oh, man, it's bad. I don't want to lose those buildings. They may not grow in the way I wanted. Uh, okay, so that should be enough for now to get some hearses over there to pick up some of those people. Uh, let's get some more sims moving in up here. So you're going to see me finagle a lot with these vanilla plus one unit wide roads and the zoning adjuster tool. I can set an offset eight meters wide so that I don't have to re-zone if I widen the road, which I intend to. The problem is, is that 
it takes away the zoning as soon as I start connecting roads to it. So um, on top of that, these vanilla plus one unit wide roads really are a struggle to deal with because they keep offsetting the grid on the streets that don't need to be offset. And it's, you know, just extra super difficult to work with. Now, if you were one of the developers on the zoning adjuster, I'd love to be in touch because maybe we can figure out, maybe we can figure out what I'm doing wrong here. <laughs> you know, we have access to high density. Why don't we put in some high density on this road here? So now we can get back to finishing these alleys back here. This one here will be a little tricky because it's tough to work around the curves and not mess up the zoning grid next to it. So I fiddle with this quite a bit until I get it just right. And I almost got it. I think the zoning adjuster helps with this one here. Uh, so now I can fill in the rest of these and get some one unit by one unit houses in here so I can get more sims moving in because I'm really worried that we're going to have too many dead sims to take care of and then I'm going to have no cemeteries to put them in. It's going to undo all this work that I did here. Uh, so now I'm going to finish up some little touches here, get some water next to the park and then work on getting water up on the hill because I totally forgot to do that too. Now let's get some zoning. We want some commercial along Highland Boulevard and Main Street here. And we're just gonna upgrade that to boulevards just to make it a little easier. And this is a really good view. So I wanna put some high density zones there. And I'm just gonna extend some of the streets that I've built over here. Try to kind of replicate what I did on the other side. I gotta get some power. So again, I'm gonna be finagling with these one unit wide roads from Vanilla Plus. They're really attractive roads that have been put together for us. And we have put the entire set into play for this particular series. Um, I love the two unit and four unit wide roads. They are really easy to work with. The bummer is that these one unit roads just uh, seem a little harder to work with than network extensions. So perhaps with some work on the zoning adjuster mod or on the person using the zoning adjuster mod, I have no idea which one it is, uh, we can get some better results here. So our hearses are still having a difficult time keeping up with everything. And that's because our cemetery over here is full. I'm gonna try to empty it and buy some time. What am I buying time for? Well, I need to get 300 more Sims to move in so I can get to crematoriums at our next milestone. So I'm gonna put some high density up here on the top of the hill, somewhat out of desperation. So I'm trying to get a few dozen bodies out of this cemetery and over to the other ones in the hopes that I can free up enough hearses so they can pick up all the dead Sims that need to be picked up and I can avoid having abandoned buildings, especially in my new neighborhood. So I'm going to extend Highland Boulevard a little further along the relatively flat area. It's got a little bit of an incline, but it's not too serious and it should be perfect for another little residential extension here. I have to finagle again with the Vanilla Plus roads, the one unit wide roads. I just want to keep some consistency here. Oh, this is bad. I am distracted. <laughs> I am a glutton for punishment for always building when the clock is running. I don't know why I didn't just pause the game and just finish this neighborhood so that I don't have to worry about dying Sims killing my city. Uh, let me get some more zones filled in here so that I can get my last 100 or so Sims. I'm so close. Oh, only I had access to land where I could put a cemetery in a reasonable place. I just don't have it yet. <laughs> I just need 85, 86 more Sims. Come on, boys. I'm adjusting some of these nodes back to terrain height using Move It uh, because I think I messed up when I laid these out with the Fine Road tool. Oh man, 
the hearses are not keeping up. We really could use another cemetery back here. Oh, yes. <laughs> Just in time. All right, let's, let's deal with this in a second here. I am saved. <laughs> Rematoriums. Okay, let's get one in up here. Mm, I'm not really crazy about that location. After all, let me move it over here and place several others throughout the different neighborhoods in my city. Put one here in Concord Place. Another one downtown over in the industrial area. And another one over here in Concord Valley. I think this should work. Yeah, that looks much better. Now let's get some water in these streets and move some more Sims in. Looks like it's time to add some more water capacity too, so we got a water tower. We have this large one. Hmm, that looks nice. Where can we put this? Let's put it on the side of the hill here. Well, now we need some more waste capacity here. And we have a much larger advanced inland water treatment plant, and that handles a little more capacity and gives us a lot less pollution. I sort of like the sound of that. So let's find a spot over here in the industrial area. I don't know about that. Let's see if we can put it over here by the railroad. There's a flat area over here. We extended the street across from those landfills. And we could probably connect something over here. I'll just bend it around so that it'll fit the terrain and the angle of Concord Boulevard there. And voila! Just have to connect it to the water grid, put pipes underneath the street instead of doing it the easy way. This is a pretty realistic place to put a water treatment plant, seeing as you don't really want to have to pump sewage up hills. So usually water treatment plants are put near the waterfront so that everything can just be discharged right out into the waterway after the sewer lines all converge on it. Uh, so now I'm just trying to get some power over here. Uh, they're screaming for industrial development, but for whatever reason, I can't get these zones to pop up. Oh, there we go. Now I've got electricity. Now I'm gonna turn off the empty landfill so I can save money and turn on the other one and start emptying it. And I noticed we're pegged on garbage. That is a lot of money to spend extra. We can save by changing things up a little bit later. So we'll do that eventually. Let's get back to the park. Now that we can breathe easy, <laughs> we can get this thing to actually advance pretty high as it is. First thing we'll do is add in a chessboard. Where do we have room for a chessboard? This looks like a good spot right over here. Now, how much do we need from here? So we've got 420. Let's try, well, we need restrooms. Restrooms are good. Actually, let's put an info booth, or an info booth right here. I want to be sort of close to that fountain. And put the restrooms over here too. Oh, that's not enough. Oh, it's so close. We could probably put another fountain over here. Oh, we could put a fence in. I think that'll actually advance us to level three. Oh, it's so close. All right, I'm gonna put the fence in. I think the fence would probably do it. Now, when you're building a park fence, it's a really good idea to turn anarchy off so that you don't end up building it onto the streets because then when, if you upgrade the streets, then you lose the fence. Now I'm probably only <laughs> two points. Okay, let's get some trees in. I believe the... Oh, there we go. I believe the fountain's open for the time being. I'm not going to put a bunch of trees in the way. I don't want to obstruct the view. Sometimes it looks a little better if you just place them by hand. And we're going to place these a little further apart along the road here. I actually go twice as far. So I really want to be able to people to be able to soak up the view as they go by here. So now we could get up to level four, just like that. Let's put those gazebos in that we just got. Those are always real nice to have. Put two on each side. Use different types because otherwise the entertainment value we get 60 each for the first one. 
of the same one, but it scores a little differently when you use... If you, we were to use four of the same one, we would not get as many points. All right, so now we're really close again. Oh, no, we got it. <laughs> level four. Now we're on our way to level five. We're about halfway there. Now a climbing frame. Got to have a playground. Where can we get a playground to fit here? I think right here would be a good place for a climbing frame. The little kids could climb on the climbing frame and the big kids could climb on the rocks. <laughs> So we need about 200 more in entertainment. Now, I don't want to clutter this up with a whole bunch of buildings, but I do think we could use another climbing frame over on this end of the park. Looks like I sort of cramped that in for space. Let's move this chessboard a little bit. Okay, so now we only need about 60 more in entertainment. Now, what could we do? Let's see. Uh, let's get our props back out. Props are a really great way to get a whole bunch of points in here. Let's put this hedge around the chessboard. The prop line tool makes it so easy because everything's lined up automatically. You can hear the sounds of sweet upgrades. All right, now, just to square off these corners. You know what, actually, I'm gonna take out. Just wanna visually terminate this a little bit. You need about 30, 30 more. Okay, so let's put in some of these gardens, or maybe some rose hedges. Let's do some of these small little gardens. Sort of a divider along here. That looks nice. Okay, now, we are so close. Okay, so one last thing we're gonna do, and this is going to be the coolest. I love these rocks, and if we just make it dark, we can't see them. If we go to find it, Let's see here, I wanna to go to props and I want lights. It's all these wonderful little lights down here. It's a red floodlight, that's perfect. All right, turn off prop line tool. All right, now I wanna hit shift P to turn prop and tree anarchy on. And all I'm gonna do is place a few lights inside between these rocks to light them up at night. That looks pretty good right there. That looks way cool, right? And it gets us over 1120. So at night, we can see those rocks. That's a cool little trick. I love doing that to my parks. We could throw a few trees in there too. I think we'll do that. Take that tree out on the corner so that you can see the fountain a little better. I think that's adequate. I am not the best detailer, but I do like designing these parks and lighting the rocks. <laughs> All right, so now let's take a look at our land value as we wait for that to come in. Uh, oh, and I forgot to set a neighborhood over here. Let me create a district and give this neighborhood a name. All right, we'll call this Concord Place. I think that'll be a good name for it. All right, so now uh, I, as I mentioned, have names for all these streets. So <laughs> give me a moment to set up street names.
it looks like we've got some traffic brewing on Douglas Street. Uh, I'll have to take a look at that in a second. Otherwise, I really like where we are right now. Let's take a look at land value. Ooh, hey, downtown Port Concord is gaining some value. 22 credits per square meter. I'm sure that this area around Boulevard Park is really taking off. And then Concord Place, 24 credits per square meter. A little bit more than downtown. So that's good. Uh, now, something that would probably contribute a great deal, as we can see with Concord Valley, we've got 31 credits. A lot of this is probably because of our police and fire coverage being a little less than complete. We don't have comprehensive coverage here. So I'm going to say that since this is a big town now, it's not really just, you know, it's really becoming a small city. We need to get some respectable police and fire coverage in here. So let's build a police department right over here. I don't want it to be completely in the center of town here, but let's just see what the coverage area looks like. That's not too bad. Maybe if it was over here a little bit. I think that would be a good place right here at Concord and 6th. Let's do that. Put police right here. And I'll put a fire department right across the street. Let's check out the fire coverage. Yeah, I think that's going to contribute quite a lot to land value down here. And we'll move the fire department down here near Concord Place. I think we could go with one at the end of the street. I think we'll put the police right across the street from there. And then we'll have really good coverage. There we go. And then now let's check out our land value. Yep, getting close to where we were. Downtown Port Concord. Oh yeah, that's it. We're going to see lots and lots of upgrades going on here. So I have no idea what the traffic backup on Douglas Street is all about, but I think the traffic routes info you might be able to tell me. Uh, looks like it could be just a lot of people going to work. Maybe some garbage trucks. Not really sure. Let's check out education. Oh, we need another school. Let me find a school over here in Concord Place. This looks like a decent spot over in this area. There we go. That'll do. And as far as high schools, well, it looks like we could use another one of those too here soon. So, did you enjoy this video? I stayed up all night making it. Please be sure to like, share, and of course, subscribe and click the notification bell. That way you won't miss my final episode this round on 5B1C, where I'll build a trade school campus and our first in-town public transportation before giving the keys to the city to Overcharged Egg. Again, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters and you for watching. So long!